everybody. This is the walkthrough video for Thursday. It is December 12th and try with two week five. What is the name of the word that starts with S? I'm sorry, I just nearly fell off my chair. When the DNA is replicated before cell division so that when each cell divides, each new cell gets one and only one copy of the appropriate DNA. Do you remember this word? Synthesis, like synthesizer. It can make sounds even though it is not itself uh, uh, like air vibrating sound making system. So, all right. Today, we are going to think about how DNA synthesis compares and contrasts to messenger RNA and protein synthesis. We are doing this before we study those processes in depth because as you go back and think more about those other processes, you're gonna to wanna to be able to compare them to this. We tried it the other way last year, it didn't work as well. So I'll give you like a little heads up about messenger RNA and protein synthesis, but we'll be learning more about those in this mini unit in the next two weeks. So um, today we are doing an assignment called modeling DNA synthesis. Um, and when you are done with this model, you're gonna copy it into your 6A study folder, which is gonna look a little different from the other study folders that we've made. So um, these are some DNA, RNA, and protein models. And I wanna show them to you quickly. You're gonna see them again for review later on in this mini unit. So as you can see, this model shows us the structure of DNA and RNA. It shows us the different nucleotides that are used if you need a refresher. And it tells us about codons, the series of three nucleotides on a messenger RNA that in turn will be important as we think about translation. So this is the DNA. And then this is another image showing the structure of the DNA. It shows the individual nucleotides and gives some additional information about how the pieces of nucleotides are put together in polynucleotides, in RNA and in double-stranded DNA. Please note in particular that the arrows going down in this one and up in the other. And if this is hard to see, you can go to something like slide 24 in the slideshow that's linked on Canvas. It's the new one for Unit 6A. Now in Model 3, you can begin to see RNA polymerase making a messenger RNA. And that messenger RNA in Model 4 is joining the ribosome where it's building a growing polypeptide chain. That pep polypeptide chain is made of amino acids. Those are our friends from unit one, right? Those proteins. Um, one of the things I love to teach about is the connection between nucleic acids and the messenger RNA COVID-19 vaccines. So this page has been archived um, because it was following the early development of select COVID vaccines. But like the, all of these are kind of the same, the same kind of story about how this type of um, vaccine works. So it turns out this is the coronavirus, one of the genes encodes for a protein that makes the spikes. And what we do is we take messenger RNA that makes that and they figured out a way to make an oily bubble made of lipid nanoparticles. Um, these are really fragile and that's why we needed all that like cold shipping during the pandemic to make sure that those could get to people unharmed. So when you are vaccinated, so I got my COVID vaccine this year in my arm, and so after injection, these particles bump into cells and they fuse into them, which releases the messenger RNA. The cells molecules, this is a ribosome, take that messenger RNA, make a spike protein. When those combine, they become an actual spike. And then those spikes are shown on the outside of these cells, not making you sick. There's no viral reproduction that's happening, but we are displaying some spike protein fragments and protruding spikes. Your cells when those vaccinated cells die, and some of them will, the debris is gonna get taken up by a type of immune cell called an antigen presenting cell. And those can find helper T cells. They raise the alarm. They're gonna make some antibodies using B cells that are going to make antibodies that match the surface proteins of those vaccinated cells. And then those are gonna stop onto existing virus particles should you be infected, uh, like, sorry, should you be exposed to the virus. And they're gonna block the spikes from actually doing the thing we know where they like dock to cells and then let their um, uh, genetic material into the cells like you saw in the activity from earlier this week. Also antigen protecting cells can uh, activate activated killer T cells and those can kill um, infected cells directly. So it's a really interesting thing to think about. I like when the things we're learning about connect to some very real world stuff. So um, it looks like I have a reminder for you about the winter reading assignment in here too. You have been reminded. All right, so our current story is this idea about DNA to RNA to protein, right? And so we're back at DNA, thinking about where new DNA comes from. And we need to know about this process. So as you're learning about other processes that involve getting information out of nucleotides, you see how they're similar and different. 
Now, um, it might be a while since you have studied cell division. We're going to do more of it soon. But just a loving reminder about this process in which you go from a diploid cell, you replicate DNA, the chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate, they pull apart, you get two diploid cells, right? And that's only a very small part of the overall cell cycle, which again, you'll learn much more about um, in the months to come. Uh, but this idea about having to duplicate DNA from here to here, you can tell is really important for your body growing from baby's first cell to a full grown adult, for repairing tissues if they're broken, for constantly replenishing rapidly growing tissues like stomach linings and skin and stuff like that. So, so here's what the college board thinks you need to know about DNA synthesis. And if you look in your textbook or your review book, you're going to find pictures that show these ideas. What you're going to do today, first probably on a whiteboard, and then using a photograph you take of it onto your study folder for unit six, the front of it, you're gonna write DNA replication, and then you're gonna put this information. DNA is synthesized in the five to three, so making all this stuff. Every place there's a bolded word, you're going to either define it or show it on your picture. Um, and if it helps you to see this process in action, this is a quick video of what it looks like when that process is in action from Cold Spring Harbor. And so um, I really like the, um, some of the ways that this shows the process uh, that you might not see if you were just looking at one of the static models that doesn't move. Even if you're not finished, our cool down for today is thinking about these two words and how that works. Now, hopefully if things have gone well, I have made the unit six video watching assignment and you'll be getting an updated uh, copy of this that contains that list, where are we? 6.2, it contains that list of things for you. So be able to use that in order to fill this out. All right, that's it for me. When I see you tomorrow, uh, we are gonna start thinking about transcription and that's where we'll end our week. A reminder that your exam is on Tuesday, a reminder that I think you're great, and I'll see you soon. Okay, that's it.